Welcome back everyone, I'm Seth Roth, and today we are going over all of the ranks, perks, and abilities of Sacrosanct as they pertain to a thief-based character. So this is going to be a quick review of all of the, the abilities that you've already seen in previous videos for Sacrosanct, but succinctly tied to just the thief playthrough. So first off, we're going to go through some of the passives. These are the perks of just being a regular vanilla vampire. The first one that obviously goes for a stealth-based playthrough is an ability passive called Stillheart. A vampire is 25% harder to detect by creatures and people when sneaking. Uh, obviously, for a stealth-typed character, this is a huge advantage. 25%. Can't argue with that. Being harder to track, obviously, very helpful. There's also another passive that you get. This is just from being a vampire, mind you. You don't have to unlock anything special in order to get this. Uh, your illusion spells, as cast as a vampire, are 25% more powerful and last 25% longer on creatures and people. Now, this is obviously one that you don't... If you're doing a muggle, <laughs> in essence, a muggle thief, and you're not worrying about illusion magic, then you can just skip this one and not worry about it. You'll get it anyway. All vampires get it, but it's something you don't have to worry about if you're not using illusion magic. Now, obviously, the first thing that we want to consider is feeding. That's when you're first starting out as a vampire, you want to make sure you are either sated or or super thirsty, depending on your playstyle. Vampire seduction is the easiest way to do that. I've already showed it in previous demos. It'll work. It makes one NPC uh, not mind the fact you're feeding on them. Just make sure you don't do it in a crowd, because the other NPCs might mind the fact you're feeding on another human being. People are just they're just kind of like that sometimes. Another really interesting power that I want to show, this is called Vampire's Sight. So as a vampire, you can crank this baby on any time, day or night, as often as you like. This is not one of those once a day type things. But basically it desaturates what you can see so that day or night, this looks pretty much the same. Like I've done half a playthrough with Vampire's Sight and I just couldn't tell whether I was in the middle of the day or the middle of the night. They both kind of were the same. It's kind of funny how that works. We're just going to deal with this troll real quick. There we go. All right. Uh, so this is just a cool one. I highly recommend using it for night time. We're going to be doing some sneaking into the fort up here, uh, but we're going to wait until nightfall. And of course, I'm going to use Vampire Sight for that. So you will get a better demonstration of that very soon. We also have another power I haven't talked about very much called Vampire's Will. This is a, oh holy crap, they detected me when I didn't want them to, and it kind of allows you to reset and get out in case of trouble. So I don't think we have, oh we do have Obfuscate. You know what? I think we're going to go ahead and do the stealth stuff uh, now. I'm just going to deal with these guys until they're out of my way. Is that it? Yes. Okay. So let's uh, get up somewhat close, wait for nightfall. Let's see, that's about 10 hours off to do it. Okay, I think. All right, so as we do our approach, I'm gonna try and cover as many of the vampire powers as possible that increase either your stealth or your base attack damage. Obviously, we're gonna want to be sneaking on our way up here. I passed it once before and procced a vampire ability that works kind of like Predator Vision, just very temporary. I'm not sure if it will proc, proc again when I approach. It doesn't look like it. Okay. Alright, so step one, when you are sneaking as a vampire. Uh, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and switch to a nice uh, melee weapon. Ebony dagger. That would be good. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's test out this vampire's will first. We've got someone to tick off. So the way this power works is it will cloud their mind for three minutes, ending combat, and making them unlikely to detect you while sneaking. So we're just gonna give this guy a little poke in his app. Oh no, what am I gonna do? And there we go. So it paused the character. It reduced his, reduced his detection. As you can see, I got past a couple of his other buddies too. Oh wow, someone in the same armor set I'm using. Huh, weird. Someone tried to steal my look. Alright, so it's once per day, but it's a good, oh holy crap, right? When you sneak up on the bandit and stab him and realize it's actually the bandit chief 
and you are not strong enough to take them on your own, it is a useful get out of death free card. Um, now that it's night, we're going to have a look at Vampire Sight. There we go. So as you can see, it is a little different from daytime, just basically the sky. But it desaturates everything and allows you to just navigate the area much better at night. And thankfully, you can turn it on and off at will, right? It's not a once per day thing. You're not stuck in it for half a day because, ugh, that would suck. All right, a couple of other abilities that we want to play with. Top of the list is Blood Cauldron. Uh, so this is an emergency heal, but there's also a power we're going to talk about later that adds, gives it extra attack damage. So you can also use this in an emergency after you've done your sneak attack, uh, or if you're obviously half dead and you need to heal. Uh, another one is Blood Revel. Uh, if you use this in combat, it also boosts your attack damage, but it also activates Wasil, which basically is a slow health drain until you feed or combat ends. So you want to use this judiciously. And since you're doing a stealth character, you probably are in com your focus is to be in combat as short a time as possible because you're trying to do assassinations. So popping Blood Revel before combat is an easy way to do that. We're going to do, let's see, I'm, I have a list here and I'm trying to get everything in order so I don't overlook anything. Uh, next, there's also Obfuscate. This is another vampire power. I believe you get it when you are either thirsty or parched, um, but it gives you unbreakable invisibility. So we're gonna go ahead and test that because I think we've got, we have, yeah, we have a couple of guys here. So I bet we can stay invisible while we do our killing. Down. Yep, notice it did not break stealth. This is the obfuscate power. It only works once per day. Um, keep in mind there's also another ability, I might as well mention it now. This is from the Blue Bloods quest line called Sense Vitae. It gives you the, the stats of the character. Their resistances, their weapons, their health, armor, all that kind of stuff. And there's our obfuscate keeping us out. Wait. Oh, see, we were detected, but we're still invisible. So we're just going to sneak up on this little gentleman here. I wonder if... Oh, we can also do a sneak feed. This is another one. It is a rank power. So once you get about seven days as a vampire, you can unlock a rank power. And this is the first one I recommend. It's called Night of the Wolf. It allows you to sneak feed on people that haven't detected you. So if you're a thief type character, this is probably the most playthrough friendly way to feed in the game. It also makes the blue blood quest much easier. Did I mention much easier? Much easier because you don't have to wait for them to sleep. You can go up to the most powerful creatures of Skyrim and as long as they don't detect you, you can feed. And it kind of helps that I'm already invisible. Although I think that just got, yeah, I think that broke when I, Oh, no, maybe we're all right. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> yep, that obfuscate power is no joke, and it lasts like two minutes. I'm going to find you. <laughs> Woo, I got out of there just in time. Nice. All right, so we're going to give them a chance to uh, find their way back to calmer waters where we can screw with them a bit more. So I already showed you Night of the Wolf. I might as well scroll down and grab the description though. Again, this is a rank power. You get the, when you spent enough time as a vampire, you can unlock one of these. Sneak feed on people who are not detecting you. Highly recommend getting that first. Now, depending on what your feeding strategy is, most of the perks that boost your melee damage tend to lean toward being blood starved, but there are some that will boost your damage while you are sated, while you are full. And I do highly recommend that one because not only does it keep give you Obviously, you're full, so you have less complications, because Blood Starved is a little tricky. It's doable, but it is tricky. And I think, actually, I don't have Fortitude on this guy. Let me, oh, wait, I guess I did. I just missed it. So when you're... So let me put it this way. If you are sated as a vampire, you're basically playing Sacrosanct in easy mode. So if you're sated as a thief-based vampire, any, if you die, you actually come back upon taking fatal damage, but you become thirstier. So you go from sated to thirsty, uh, which does cost you a couple of abilities. You'll lose Cauldron of Fire, I believe. That goes away unless you are sated. So keep that in mind. Uh, or Blood Cauldron. Uh, Cauldron of Fire, we're gonna cover that. That's an enhancement that you get. 
Uh, yeah, so that's kind of... Uh, so that is something I recommend that's like easy mode. And then when you get into running around as a blood-starved character, you can do a blood-starved playthrough, but you do need to finish out the blue blood quest line in order to make that work. Because there are some buffs for that. And we're going to we're gonna discuss those. That That's coming. So Pat, the reason I want to talk about feeding real quick was because Path of Humanity depends on what style of feeding you're going for. If your goal is to stay sated for as long as possible, Path of Humanity is high, is very worth it. I personally, I get lost in dungeons. I just am enjoying the game and I forget to feed every day. And then my, my vampire will get hungry. And then if, I, if that goes on for too long, you'll be blood starved. And there's other complications that... They're not complications if you build a character around being blood starved, but... If you don't, then you might, you know, you run into complications. So there's Path of Humanity that will slow the rate at which you get thirsty as a vampire. So if you're doing sated builds, obviously that's preferable. Uh, if you're doing a, if you are losing thirst and you do not want to be in Wasil because that drains your health, there's also this uh, rank power that reduces the chance of Wasil kicking in. So it helps you to avoid Wasil. That's another one that I would consider. Because usually as, as a thief, you're trying to be keep things as safe as possible so that you can assassinate people when their backs are turned, rather than diving into the fight at any given moment. Uh, Alright, another one I wanted to show you guys is Eyes of the Predator. This is another rank power, and yeah, I'll just show it to you. Uh, it does, I believe, it, yeah, it costs health. So this is more of a brief view of what's going on. There we go. Now notice how it highlights people with that... Uh, yeah, with that kind of infrared looking mist, that's the same thing that happens. It's the same effect with another ability. I've got to look it up. Where did you go? Oh, well, losing health got turned off. Okay, so that is the Eyes of the Predator power. And that's a good way for scouting to make sure that you know what you're getting into. If you are using the, fun the Vanilla Shout Aura Whisper, you can use that instead because it's a very similar effect. But if you have a different shout that you prefer or some other power that you want to use, um, this also works. And if you're doing a stealth build, losing a little bit of health isn't that big a deal because obviously I'm you know, tucked away. I'm not being detected. It's easy for me to heal up and I'm good. All right, it might as well uh, feed up a little bit. Uh, next, I want to show Cauldron of Fire. This is the last of the vampire ranks that I highly recommend for a build for a stealth character. Cauldron of Fire, you can activate it and then you deal double attack damage and you take half attack damage for 30 seconds. So if you're going in to assassinate someone, uh, being able to double your attack damage right before you do your sneak attack is like huge. So we're going to uh, experiment with that now. Let's see if there's anyone left to experiment on or <laughs> should we take out some Judicators? I don't know how far they got. No, not far. All right, we'll try this. All right, so we're going to attempt to pop Blood Cauldron and then go for a sneak attack. It didn't even do anything. Oh, come on. What was that? So not bad. Took out half of the Judicator's health in one hit. They are, they are not easy guys to kill. And I'm, this is not a stealth-based character, if that makes any sense. This character is not a stealth build. This is actually a mage's build. I just threw some armor on him for the demonstration. But uh, you know what? We might as well have a little bit of fun here. If this guy can get up up the hill after me, I don't see him yet. So maybe I'm going to be all right. Anyway, so Cauldron of Fire is a good option. It reduces incoming damage. Right. Oh, hello. <laughs> you don't see me. You don't see me. You don't see me either. There we go. All right. So keep in mind, when you're a vampire, you have a 25% boost to your stealth. And my stealth is already pretty high. So plus at night, their detection is greatly reduced. And I have night vision. They don't. So there's a lot of cat and mouse games that can be unlocked when you are a vampire thief. Just because, for obvious reasons, things get enhanced. Keep in mind, I don't have any sneak attack perks right now. My sneak is not very upgraded at all, because this isn't a mage character, so you're not going to be seeing me one-shotting anybody. Well, I mean, he is a maid, and he's wearing robes, so maybe I can assassinate this guy. Oh, I cannot assassinate this guy. Okay, moving on. 
All right, I will stop trying to pull off sneaky assassin things with my not sneaky, not assassin character. Uh, we'll just get some distance from these guys and then go back into the demo. All right, that ought to do it. All right, so what's next? All right, so. I guess we will get some more distance. These AIs are tricksy. Okay. So there are a couple different quests that you can do in Sacrosanct. Uh, for the mage's build, I had a lot to say about the Hemomancy quest line, because blood magic is amazing, particularly if you're highly trained in destruction magic. However, for a... There we go. Okay. For a thief-based playthrough, I highly recommend the blue blood quest line. That means feeding on the most powerful inhabitants of Skyrim. It is much easier to pull off when you can feed on sneaking targets. But we're going to go over the buffs that you get for basically every buff for blue blood does something helpful for a thief. So the first one that we get is a passive. So once you feed on one of these qualifying NPCs for blue blood, you will get potence. Your vampire strength grants 15 more percent attack damage when you are blood starved and 30% when you are sated. So this is one of those buffs that helps you when you are full, when you are well fed and you have fortitude up to help you if you die. So this is this is your bread and butter. Very first, and I like this, you get this first, right? The very first person you feed, the very first powerful NPC you feed on, you get this buff. So it is an immediate boost to any physical damage based character. Uh, the next one that you get is called Sense Vitae. This, again, is from the Blue Blood quest line. Uh, we already saw this one. You can activate a target while sneaking to learn its attributes and resistances. So it gives you a better idea of what kind of weapon or what kind of poison or what kind of spell would be most effective against that particular target. Uh, let's see. So the next one, again, I believe this is another passive that you get from Blue Blood, is called Eyes of the Moon. There we are. Your vampire's seduction power can affect targets up to 50 levels higher. I mean, at that point, you are... Remember, vampire's seduction, its primary role is to make an NPC calm and non-combative while you feed on them. You could also use it to make them calm. I mean, it works in combat, right? You, so if you tick off the, the bandit chief and he's within your, the levels of this spell, you can actually use this on him so that it'll calm down and then you can get your assassination on him or you can get away. So there are options for using Vampire Seduction in combat, just remember it only works once a day, so it's not something you can spam. But obviously being able to hit 50 levels higher is uh, useful. So for example, if you look at my Vampire Seduction, I can hit anything level 99 or below. So any target under level 99, I can hit with Vampire Seduction and they will immediately calm for 44 seconds. You can feed on them, you can get behind them and assassinate them. There's a lot of options there, courtesy of Vampire Seduction and Eyes of the Moon. Another one, Blue Bloods gives you more passives. Uh, not a whole lot of abilities, but the passives are really nice. So the passive, the next passive that I want to cover is called Tooth and Claw. Uh, now this one is more if you're mixing, if you're doing like a stealth destruction build, but it does give you more attack damage if the target is affected by blood seed. So it's kind of up to you if you to what level you want to include blood magic. I will point out that blood seed is only an apprentice level spell. So you'd only have to drain like three, maybe five NPCs in order to unlock this. So if you were just using, oh, there, there we go. If you were bl using blood seed as a debuff to increase your assassination damage, Keep in mind this lasts for 10 seconds. So if you hit them with blood seed and then you pacify them with vampiric seduction, they're still taking damage. So the 25% the extra melee damage still applies despite the fact they are calm. And then you can hit them with your assassination to do extra damage. So there are combinations of this that can work really well. But obviously if you're doing a pure build where you're not using blood magic, then tooth and claw, I mean, you'll get it during the quest line because you still need the buffs that come after it, but it's not necessarily uh, vital to your playthrough. Uh, the next one that you get in the blue blood quest line is called Myth Mythseria. Mythseria. Let me scroll up to the M's real quick. I have so many buffs. All right, so Mythseria. Days pass 20% faster and night passes 30% slower. 
So one of the key reasons that I put this into the Thief playthrough is because obviously when you're a thief, you do most of your work at night. Uh, enemy detection is limited. And if you're a vampire, there are actually debuffs that you have to deal with during the day. So the fact that you can actually change the weather patterns of Skyrim so that the night passes slower in your area and days pass faster just makes it easier when you're out in the open in Skyrim. You will be in, I, I haven't done the exact math, but technically I think you'll, you'll end up in nighttime instead of 50% of the time will be more like 60 to 70% of the time, which is not bad. Not bad at all. Now, the last two buffs that you get, although, are huge for a thief-type playthrough. So the first one is Masquerade. You are no longer hated and feared when blood-starved. Now, when, once you can be blood-starved without NPCs attacking you, you can capitalize on certain perks that maximize your melee damage when blood-starved. And that can be good for your assassination attacks, obviously, because then you can put all of these attack damage buffs into one strike to do as much damage as possible to the target. I know this is technically a thief playthrough and your thief may not be an assassin per se, but I feel like if you're using stealth to do damage, you're gonna want to maximize that damage anyway. All right, the last one I wanna cover, this is the piece de resistance for, and for the blue blood quest line. And basically this helps any vampire. You are now immune to non-lethal sunlight. This is huge. When you're in sunlight in Sacrosanct, you don't regenerate. Your stats are all weaker, particularly health, as well as your magicka and stamina. So this is a huge help because you can actually operate during the day without any of those debuffs. It really frees you. And I like that it's only available at the very end of the Blue Blood quest line because it really makes you work for it. It's a really good perk. It really affects your playthrough as a vampire because it gives you freedom to actually go out and fight like normal. Um, but at the same time, it takes a long time to get there. So I think that's I think that's a good balance. Because the reason why I never, like when I first started with Morrowind, I hated getting vampirism because daylight, I think it actually hurts you. It was either Morrowind or Oblivion. It might have been Oblivion. Anyway, I hated the randomness of, oh look, I forgot it was daytime and now I'm on fire. Yay! Uh, but yeah, Daywalker is a great, great ray around those debuffs. All right, so I think that takes care of most of the powers and abilities that I thought were primarily primarily applied to a vampire thief playthrough. We're going to go ahead and crank on the vampire lord now, because there are a few perks as a vampire lord that I think are important to keep in mind. And of course, while I was talking, most of my time I was in a uh, I was in paused menu, so all these guys that I was dealing with can still be dealt with, which uh, works quite nice. I'm already doing a mage character, so my my destruction magic and my blood magic, my ray spells, they all do a crap ton of damage. As you can see, that was a lot less difficult than what it could have been otherwise. Uh, Alright, so lastly, the perks. The perks of the Vampire Lord that I think particularly help the Thief. Alright, Auspex. This is a good one. Uh, in mortal form, your supernatural senses warn you of the presence of enemies within 200 feet. Briefly illuminate them through walls. Enemies can only be illuminated once, and enemies that are too close are not detected. Okay, so basically if you remember when I was using Eyes of the Predator, how it made all of the creatures in front of me kind of glow with that reddish energy, it just does that randomly. Not, not randomly, but when you're traveling and you're within 200 feet of a creature, that will it will mark them for a couple of seconds. Um, but it won't mark them a second time, and I was scouting out this place to figure it out for a playthrough, which is why it didn't happen when I got up to this dungeon uh, the first time, because, yeah, I'd already been there. But it's great, particularly for traveling overland, and if you're trying to sneak around dungeons, because it marks where all of your enemies are. It doesn't last too long, though, which really helps with immersion, because that way you're, you're not sneaking up on a big ball of energy, you're actually sneaking up on a person. The, the marking doesn't last very long, which I think is appropriate. All right, I'm also a big fan of Quartz Chef. Uh, you're able to create blood potions at a cooking pot using either human flesh or human hearts. Uh, the nice thing about this is not only does it feed your Vampire Lord perks, but it also heals you and obviously counts as feeding. So if you're doing a build that is centered around staying well fed and being sated as a vampire, being able to brew potions obviously is a huge 
very a big help for that, especially if you're stuck in like a Dwemer ruin where you're fighting things that you can't actually feed on as a vampire, so you're just progressively getting hungrier and hungrier. And then, of course, you lose like Fortitude and Blood Cauldron and a lot of these other really helpful abilities. So having a couple blood potions in your pocket is super helpful whenever you're doing that. All right, Psychic Vampire. Remember we were talking about stealth feeding, right? So in this one, you stealth feed on someone. It reduces their magicka and stamina, but it also increases the effectiveness of Dominate and Stillheart by 200%. So remember that Dominate is your illusion magic and Stillheart is your stealth. So I do kind of chuckle at the idea of you have to be in melee range, behind them, feeding on them before you can make your stealth more effective against them. But uh, it's still it's still helpful. Uh, also, if you're doing an illusion-based build, obviously making your illusion at this point dominate its vanilla mode is 25%. But when you use this perk and then feed, your illusion spells become 50% more powerful. And if you've seen my Apocalypse Illusion mod, that that's... That's there's a lot to be said for that because there is so much damage you can do through apocalypse and illusion spells. All right, this is more of a late game selection for thieves, but I highly recommend celerity. Able to move at unnatural speed in mortal and magic form, your movement speed goes up by 10%, and then in your melee vampire lord form, it's 20%. Mainly, what we're going for here is your mortal form gets 10% faster. The only downside is that the perks that are required to unlock it are all like Vampire Lord and Melee Vampire Lord oriented, which isn't ideal because if you're a thief and you're specializing in stealth, you're probably not going to spend a lot of time in Vampire Lord mode. But because you can actually gain experience through your potions, you won't actually need to fight as a Vampire Lord to gain these perks. You just have to patiently chug your potions until you get up enough experience to unlock them. And then you'll have that extra movement speed, which for thieves and assassins is huge because you can move around so much easier and sneak around behind or between enemies with a lot more ease once you move faster. Uh, I guess another thing, White Wolf can be helpful because your Vampire Seduction now works on targets 30 levels higher. Uh, and also when your Illusion Magic is increased against a target, that will also affect your Vampire Seduction because technically it counts as Illusion Magic. So that is, obviously this perk is more designed towards the draining type quests if you're draining someone to do Hemomancy and get Blood Magic. But just the fact that it makes Vampire Seduction more effective makes it more likely that when you bite off more than you can chew, you can grab the toughest guy there, pop Vampire Seduction, now he's pacified and you can focus on his more squishier opponents. Alright, we're going to go ahead and throw in Embrace the Beast. I wasn't thinking of this one initially for Thieves, but basically when you are blood starved, so when you haven't had a human in four days and you are starving, you deal 25% more attack damage. Your Flay Wind ability lasts longer, which means it does more damage and your Vampiric Drain is also enhanced. Now, assuming you're not using Vampiric Drain and you're not focusing on Flail Wind, this does give you more attack damage, but you will not be able to make the most of this perk until you beat the Blue Blood quest line, which makes it so NPCs can't tell that you're blood starved, right? Once they can't tell that you're blood starved, you can grab this perk and enjoy that extra 25% damage. But until then, if they see you blood starved, they will attack because you basically look like the feral vampires that you find in dungeons and the NPCs realize this and try to kill you. So this is something if you're doing a more blood starved build to get as much physical damage as possible, you can look at that. Uh, I also recommend looking at my fighter build because that again is focused on all the things that boost your physical attack damage over anything else. Blood starved comes with a couple other perks that boost that but they're not really stealth or thief oriented, so I hadn't really focused on them up until now. Uh, I, I wouldn't quite worry about echolocation. It's a night power, it only works while you are in Vampire Lord form, which I assume you're not gonna be in if you are a thief. I think we're gonna go ahead and mention this one. Amaranth, this is a little more circumstance oriented, but it can be fun. Your vampire seduction is further enhanced so that it also works on vampires. And when you feed on the drained power, you have the option of draining it. And when you drain it, you disintegrate them and absorb their power. Your reward for this depraved act is 30% bonus to combat skills. So obviously your assassination damage goes up and your social skills. While weaker vampires will actually flee from you for five minutes. So this one might be tricky to incorporate into a pure stealth situation because they're fleeing from you. So the 
they will obviously know where you are. But it does last for a full five minutes. So 30% bonus damage for five minutes, even if you're only spending four of that in stealth, obviously gives you a lot more assassination damage. Uh, the fact that you can sneak up, get past all the guards, go right to the vampire that is the highest level, and drain him dry is some, an interesting assassination technique that you might want to consider trying, particularly since it makes all of his vampire lackeys flee from you for five minutes while you chase them around and... It could be fun. It's something to think about. It's definitely an end game type approach. It's not something you're going to be able to unlock right at the start. But a lot of these perks come from the same tree. Court Chef, Psychic Vampire, White Wolf. So you'll pr this will probably be your first line of Vampire Lord perks anyway because it just provides a lot of options that enhance or tweak the, the thief style playthrough. And then you can move on to some other ones that down the line are helpful, like Celerity. But again, that's all the way up at the end of this tree, and it takes a while to get that much experience. So I hope this little rundown was uh, helpful to you guys. I've already demonstrated all of these in other videos, which is why I didn't take the time to run around and just demonstrate them all again, because I feel like I've already done that, and I don't want to beat a dead horse. But it does give you guys a good overview of the specific abilities that I su suggest prioritizing when you decide to do a vampire playthrough. I think there's a lot to be said for that. Uh, for just having a quick list of what, I, what works best if you're designing a build around stealth or magic or physical combat or what have you. So uh, thank you so much for joining me on this playthrough or this uh, demonstration I should say. Feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, let me know in the comments below what was your favorite uh, stealth-oriented vampire ability. My favorite is obs Obfuscate. Hope I said that right. Once per day it gives you unbreakable invisibility for 60 seconds. I think that is huge. And the fact that you can access that as le at level 1 if you're a vampire is really helpful. Uh, yeah, so that's just one of my favorites. I look forward to hearing some of yours. Take care. Have a great day.